Amen. Man, it's been a good morning, hey? Yeah? Oh, getting together as a church family for uh, baptisms and worship. There's a Christmas carol in there. Yes. It's Advent. Uh, the stage is looking good. Can we give it up for Jeff, who put together the stage? That's awesome. Love it. Love it. I got a question for you. How many of you guys have already seen Elf? Elf this season? How many? This season? Season? How many will, in the words of Toby Max, see it at least twice per season? That's your, your thing? Yeah? Yeah? How many have never seen Elf? Okay. Okay, that's okay too. We're all the family of God. Uh, but if you know me, I, I, I love Christmas. And I kind of follow the code of the elves that's in that movie. Uh, the first one is, uh, treat every day like Christmas. It's, it's me. I love that. And here's the next one. I need you to help me. Okay? Those that know it. The best way to spread Christmas cheer is... Oh, you're with me. That's awesome. I love it. I love it. And we do that, right? We sing carols, and we got to sing one of them today. Uh, we're going to sing Behold at the end of the service. And, and man, it's just wonderful. Uh, for those of you who don't know, my uh, Christmas experience starts November 12th. And some of you are going, oh, brother. And others are going, that's awesome. Some people are November 1st people. Uh, but man, I love, I love Christmas. And you can show the, the, the scene here. This is my front lawn. Uh, and, and I'm excited because uh, Reed actually brought me three more penguins today. Uh, and so I'm going to build another scene with more penguins. It's awesome. It's penguins celebrating the joy of Christmas. Like, that's the point. This is why I get excited about Christmas. There, yeah, there's lights and there's Penguins, because that's what I do. <laughs> but the center of it, it's a little off-centered. That's usually centered. Is the fact that Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. That he came to earth and that we can, we can praise him. And I love that it's not just one day in our calendar. It's not just Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. We have this Advent season where we have four Sundays where we can come and we can prepare our hearts for the mystery and the wonder of Christ coming to earth as the God child. So this year, we're, we're, we're going to embrace Advent once again, and, and you've heard it uh, as the candle got lit, that uh, we're going to be following Isaiah 9 verse 6, and the names of Jesus that are presented there. And so I invite you, we got one verse that we're going to show. It's already up there. But if you want to poke and flip, just you can, you can poke and flip to Isaiah 9, verse 6. Uh, and you can also have your finger, finger in your Bible to uh, Philippians 2 will be there as well. Uh, it says this in Isaiah 9, verse 6. It says, for, us, uh, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders. Here's the names. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. God, I thank you for Advent. I thank you that we have this opportunity set aside where we can reorient our hearts to you what you've done, who you are. This is the start, God. Would you work in each of our hearts and our lives? And may this be a year that is life-changing as we don't just go through the motions, but as we commit to leaning in to you during this Advent season. Work, we are, we are uh, willing and ready and, and waiting for your spirit to come and impact our hearts. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, wonderful counselor. Two words today. You know what? The, the English language, is Karen Hebert here today? She's an English teacher. She's not. She's here. Oh, there, yes. English. It's a silly thing at times, hey? The, this, this, not, not the subject, but in practice. I love what you do, Karen. The, 
the English language, uh, like, like powerful words that are completely used out of context in such trivial things. Powerful words, exquisite words, beautiful words, like wonderful. I'll give you an example. Husband on the TV show hears that his in-laws are coming over, and what does he describe? Wonderful. Oh, goody. Right? Like, that's, that's the way wonderful can be used. I love my in-laws. I would never say that. Uh, <laughs> wonderful can be used in other ways. Uh, either, maybe it's to describe a very pleasant person. She's so wonderful, right? Or, you know, you're, you're out for a walk with a friend, and you say, it's just a wonderful day to be out and walking. It's this, this, this warm and fuzziness around wonderful. And so, can I geek out for a second? Can you do that with me? I'm going to dive in. We've got two words uh, for this message today. And, and I just want to dive into the, to a little Hebrew on the word wonderful. I'm going to mess up this saying of it, but I'm going to try. Okay? So the, the word is pele. And did you know that it's not an adjective? It's actually a noun. And stay with me, because this is awesome. When I say she's a wonderful person, the person is the noun, and the adjective, the describing word, is that she's wonderful. It's warm and fuzzy. We're going to talk about how great she is. We know the state of my kids' socks because they are smelly socks, right? Smelly room. Pretty much everything is smelly for kids. Right? That's the adjective. That's the describing word. And this passage isn't describing Jesus as a counselor that is wonderful. It's a noun. I love the way the, uh, the daily bread refers to wonder. He's a wonder. The child of the Davidic lineage. Right? The God-man. Our daily bread defines a, a wonder as a phenomenon lying outside the realm of human explanation or understanding. That which is separated from the normal course of events. Let me say it again. A phenomenon that is lying outside of the realm of human explanation or understanding. The Christ child, the God man on earth, that should blow our minds. I have a picture and you can show it of the, the manger scene. You can throw it up there. Oh, not that one. That one, there you go. Beautiful baby. Either in the manger or, or this is from the movie The Nativity. And so Mary's holding Jesus in her arms. And, and it, does it get you feeling a little nostalgic? I find myself wanting to sing songs in my heart like uh, Away in a Manger. Or, or maybe for you, you like to bring gifts to God and so little drummer boy is playing in your mind as you hear this. Or, or maybe you like a little pop and it's Bonnie M's Mary Christ Child. That's how you roll. We can have the temptation to see this or to see the nativity scene and get all warm and fuzzy. We grab our eggnog or our, our apple cider we light a candle or we, you know, light a fire and we cozy up. And then maybe we watch a Christmas movie. And this scene is warm and fuzzy and it's such a wonderful event. Wonderful, warm and fuzzy. That's not what Isaiah is talking about here and why it's so crucial that I'm using, that I'm talking about nouns and adjectives. This scene, the child is a phenomenon that is inexplicable. He is beyond the full grasp and our understanding. The child is a marvel, a miracle. There is no better passage to describe what's going on here than Philippians 2. And we'll read it. This is about Jesus. Being in very nature God, he did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness. I love uh, what the ESV says here. Uh, it says that uh, he uh, was, 
let me find it here, sorry. Uh, that he emptied himself, became nothing, emptied himself. And being found in, the, in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. And I love this. See if you can pick out the angels praising God. Uh, to the, remember the, when the, the declaration to the shepherds happened? See this here in this next verse. It says, therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to, to the glory of God the Father. Do you see it? The angel, the army, the angels of light that took a dark night and made it more brilliant than day singing glory to God in the highest. This is what they were singing about. This child, Jesus, this fragile baby that in our manger scenes are lying in, and he's lying in an animal feeding trough. This child is the almighty creator of the universe. Take that in for a second. This child flung the planets into the sky. He formed the mountains. He made weather patterns. He created all living things. The ultimate power in that. And at first glance, it doesn't make sense. He's a wonder. This child is the marvel, the divine. God himself and humanity fusing together as one in such a perfect way. So how's that possible? Jesus emptied himself. He gave up his God powers, voluntarily gave them up and so that he could be truly human. 100% God and 100% human. The wonder of that, friends. But it's more than the incarnation. It's more than God with skin on his face. It's the wonder of the wisdom and the miracles Jesus grew up doing in his earthly ministry. It's the wonder of this fragile baby. Think about this for a second. The wonder of him being the servant king of kings. He would die for you and for me. What wondrous love. Jesus would die a torturous death on the cross so that we can be made right with God, so that we can leave our past embarrassments behind us. And get this, Satan couldn't keep him dead. It's the wonder that he defeated Satan, sin, and death once and for all, for all who believe. He opened the key to heaven. Romans says that uh, he, uh, we obtained the righteousness of Christ. And we get to party with him for an eternity. It's the wonder of him leaving and sending the paraclete, the Holy Spirit, to be with us. The wonder of God with us. A wonder, a counselor, I think I've wrecked a bunch of Christmas cards, hey? Just doesn't roll off the tongue. Wonderful counselor, a wonder, a counselor. But the meaning is just so rich. The very next words of Isaiah, I'm not gonna spend long on this, uh, but is counselor, the advisor, the giver of wisdom, and this is glorious. Think about this for a second. The child is beyond our understanding, yet is understandable because of the wisdom of Christ. The unbelievable meets the wisdom to understand. Praise God for that. Jesus' name is Counselor. He brings wisdom we desperately need in a world that is so complex. We're in need of his spirit and his wisdom in our life. If you look at uh, the word counselor used in scripture, it's used as advisor. And so David, King David had advisors that would bring him knowledge and bring him perspective. Well, now we have one that is perfect, that doesn't have human limitations, 
perfect wisdom, a counselor. So Jesus is a wonder, a counselor. The question, the question I have for you is personal during this Advent season. And I'm gonna invite the worship team to come up as I ask this question. What, what do you and I do with information like that? A wonder, the greatest wonder, the giver of wisdom. People responded to Jesus in, in so many different ways in scripture. At first, Matthew 20, 7, 28 uh, said the, the crowd was ex- astonished with, at his wisdom and his teaching. Luke 9, 11 says that the crowd flocked from all over to witness the wonder and to be healed and to hear his wisdom. But being astonished and amazed, that's one thing. Embracing the wonder is another. Let me give you an example. We have Jesus and he's walking along the road and he sees 10 people and they have a skin disease that is deadly leprosy. And Jesus heals them, they cry out, and he heals them, and he says, now go to the priest and and be absolved so you can join society. You're healed, they'll check them out, they're kind of like a bit of a doctor, and then you can go back into regular society. Do you know how many people came back and worshiped him? One. One out of the 10 worshiped Jesus. It is one thing to be astonished and amazed at Jesus. It is quite another to embrace the wonder that he is for our everyday life. The religious leaders respond uh, with offense. They were offended at the wonder and wisdom of Christ. They listened to him. They were eager at first, but it didn't quite measure up to their view. And instead of putting their pride and their prestige and their past aside, they armed themselves against Jesus and had him murdered on a cross. John 6 says that after a sermon, many of the disciples abandoned him. That was their response. Not the apostles, but many of his disciples. The rich young ruler walked away sad, because he couldn't truly embrace Jesus as his Lord and his Savior. And then you have the disciples who left everything to follow him. And yet I am so encouraged by this that the Bible is full of imperfect people. Because even after three years of ministry with him and seeing him after his resurrection, do you know what Matthew 28, 18 says? Some doubted. We can walk alongside Jesus and he embraces us and our doubts and walks that through. I love that. You have the woman at the well in John 4, Paul in Acts, and so many more. They choose to not only embrace, and and part of this embracing is to tell the world about the wonder and the wisdom of God in their lives. And today, what a beautiful thing that we had four individuals that declared their faith, embraced the wonder through baptism. In a John 1, 9 type of way, as for me, I will serve the Lord anthem. So my question is, how about you? How about you? The wonder of Christ. The wisdom of God is available to you and to me. Will you receive it? Jesus calls us to get up and and, and to go, to experience the wonder, to live it and his love and the power of the spirit and embrace the wisdom he offers. Yet it's something we embrace. We don't just get astonished by, we embrace it. So as we 
have Advent. I want to encourage you that during this four-week time frame where we can marvel at the wonder and wisdom of Christ, would you lean in? He is in control. When we are in the sweet spot, uh, as, as the church says, when we are following Jesus and making him known in all we do, we are living that wonder. It is life-changing. I have experienced that in my life. I'm living it. I'm trying to live it as best I can. And I'm going to leave you with Revelations 3.20. As a call, Jesus longs for you to hear his voice, to fully open the door to your heart. And get this, for him to come in and commune with you forever. Such a beautiful thing. Maybe this Advent season, 2022, is the year that you embrace a life a life-changing wonder and wisdom of Jesus. And I guarantee you, if you make that decision, it will change your life forever. Would you join me in prayer? Hmm. Jesus, you truly are what your name says. You are a wonder, the wonder, the greatest wonder. praise you for that. There are so many ways that, that people have taken you and your, your wisdom, getting offended or just walking away. God, I pray, would you prepare our hearts for this season? so that we could lean in to the wonder and wisdom of you, Jesus. You are so good. We want to worship you. And we welcome you to change our hearts.